Jason Heiner and welcome to CNET's Cracking Open, where we crack open some of the best technologies that you can find, most interesting devices, most interesting stuff, and we show you what's inside. So Bill, what are we gonna crack open today? Yeah, so today we have the Polaroid Snap Touch Instant Digital Camera. It's kind of a mouthful to say, right? But it's a really cool device. Yes, Basically, we have a camera that's stuck to a printer that allows you to get that instant gratification uh, after you take a photo, you edit a little bit, and print out one of these really cool, I think two by three inch uh, prints that yes. so you can hand out to your friends, print multiple copies, put them in a scrapbook, whatever you wanna do. Um, it's really kind of neat, and we wanted to find out how do you actually marry a camera and a printer. So now this takes you back to that 1970s experience yep. where you have the instant gratification of I've got one little device, click the shutter, and immediately I get a little print. Yep. So we're gonna look at, at how they've pulled that off, right? Yep, so on the uh, Polaroid Snap Touch, uh, this one, makes, what makes it different than the uh, Polaroid, regular Polaroid Snap camera, is it has a uh, touch screen, a little digital uh, touch screen LCD on the back. If we, to start cracking this open, what we're gonna do, and this is how you load the paper, we're gonna open up the touch screen here, pop this open. That touch screen lets you edit the photos a That's little right. bit That's right, you can you apply them, a right? few filters, you can select how many you wanna print out, there are uh, some minor edits that you can make inside the camera. Um, and we're going, there's one small screw. Now, luckily this is a Phillips, just a regular Phillips. It's very small. So this is a double zero or a triple zero uh, screwdriver. So you can remove this small screw like that. And once that comes out, what we can do is we can actually remove this plastic uh, housing, this part of the plastic housing. So we're gonna start around here and luckily it's just going to pop open. It's going to pop open. We're going to be real gentle with the plastic. You can kind of see it's already started to loosen there. Now that we have one of the, the screw released, there's just a single screw. And then we're going to pop this around. Again, we're going to be real pretty yeah, gentle. Real gentle and precise. Remember, Bill has the, gonna... the hands of a brain surgeon anyway. and the patience of Mother Teresa. So you <laughs> got to really take it easy. There we go. And not force it. And with that, we can lift off uh, this piece of the plastic housing. And once we do that, we can see there are more screws here, here around the outer edges of the camera's plastic shell that we, can, uh, that we need to remove. But we're gonna go ahead and remove the four screws, one on each edge. And once we do this, we should be able to remove the front cover, part of the Very plastic good. shell, and start getting to the inside. You know, it, it's what's really interesting um, about this camera is the zinc or Z ink uh, yeah. paper. So this camera itself is put out by CA Marketing. Uh, the, company, the company that actually uh, puts the camera out is just licensed under the Polaroid, uh, Polaroid name. Uh, the Z ink paper is really kind of cool. Uh, the crystals that are embedded in the paper are actually clear. And what happens is, as the printer applies heat, uh, they turn, uh, and they're, they're at different levels within the paper. Yes. So they, they turn different colors based on the amount of heat that's applied in the area it's applied in. So that's how it's able to print the, um, you know, to print the pictures. Now, once we have the uh, screws removed, we can remove the front cover. Again, we're gonna be real careful here. I'm just using my fingernails um, because mine are just pretty strong and I'm not worried about breaking them. Uh, because they're they're not really long. So we right. have the plastic front cover uh, separated here. We've got it fr uh, separated from the frame and we can just lift that off. And right now we get our, set that aside for right now and we get our first look inside the camera. And we can already see some of the components uh, standing right out here. We of course have uh, the battery uh, pack over here. We can see the actual camera sensor right there. And we can see the printer mechanism over here on the left side here of the camera. Um, and we can see a few of the chips already on one of the circuit boards that are in here. So Excellent. So we're gonna go ahead and the first thing, uh, one of the first things I always like to do with these devices is disconnect the battery. Um, this is a fairly large uh, battery, of course. Um, it has to power, or store enough power uh, to power the flash. There's a capacitor that powers this flash, uh, but the battery has to be kind of beefy. We're gonna be real careful 
not break the battery, we're going to remove this first so we can lift the battery right out like this. And then we're going to, I'm going to Just gently, pop it out of there. I don't like to pull on cables too much, so I really want to get close to the connectors. We're going to disconnect um, the battery here. This one actually happens to be an 8.14 uh, 8 watt hour. Um, 1100 milliamp uh, hour battery. It's 7.4 volts. It's a pretty good, good sized battery. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start removing a few more screws inside uh, the device here. Sounds First good. thing I'm going to try and take apart is we're going to remove the screws here from the main uh, or from one of the system boards that are in here. Right. While you're doing that, we can talk a little bit about what people, you know, could use these devices for. This prints on two by three mm -hmm. uh, sheets. Uh, of paper, as we've talked about. And uh, these things, um, again, you don't have to buy any ink, no, no ink. Uh, you only buy the paper. A 30 pack of these sheets is about 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, so it's about 50 cents uh, a, a photo, uh, which isn't bad considering. Mm. People are using these for marketing purposes uh, as well. So if you have a company event, uh, you can take a bunch of these photos of people uh, there, your clients, and then create uh, a nice board that you could have in your office after the event. We've seen some really creative things that people have done with these. Um, this device retails at about 180 bucks. Yep. Right. The, the regular uh, the touch. one is about 100 bucks, 99, and this is 179, 100 yep. bucks. And it's a 13 megapixel uh, camera on Great. this one compared to a 10 megapixel camera, I believe, on the regular uh, Snap. Okay. So, it's not the greatest of, uh, of cameras, but it's good enough, and it takes yeah. some fun pictures. It does, and that, so that touch, um, this device gets you a little bit higher megapixel, obviously, a little bit better quality camera, and the ability to not necessarily print everything, every foot, uh, right. to really be so more selective of which things you wanna and print. see what so. you're printing beforehand. That, yeah. that, that's really what's and, helpful. Like so, you said, do some filters as well. Do some filters. So, so where we got at? some of the screws removed, from the, um, uh, from, the, from the camera, what I call the camera board here, where we have to be really careful. Uh, there are a few of these, what are called flat flexible cables here. And unfortunately with these connectors, there isn't really a gate to flip up or anything mm. like that that I found. And so <laughs> they're just sort of pressure fit in there. Yeah. You gotta be, I wanna be very careful. I don't wanna tear the cables. I don't wanna rip the cables. So I use a pair of ESD safe, um, tweezers to grip the cables, trying not to grip it, trying to use my fingers or not grip it in a manner that would uh, fracture the cable, that would yes. cut one of the wire leads inside the cable. Um, be real careful. And we always enjoy. learn a lot about these devices when you do them, but you're being careful because we always try to take them apart with an eye of putting them back together yes. in working order because we know a lot of our, our readers, our users, uh, viewers that they want to do the same thing, right? That, that sometimes they're taking these things apart to repair. In this case, you know, there's not really, uh, you're probably not taking this device apart to repair. Um, we're taking it apart to learn more about, about the, the device, device and itself. understand yeah. it. And I just wanted to see how do you marry a camera and a, and printer, a printer together into yeah. a single device, right? I thought that was really kind of cool. Sometimes it's um, pure curiosity. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, what is it? A Reese's cup, peanut butter and chocolate together. We wanted to figure out <laughs> how you smash together a, a camera and a printer. This you can see here, we've got what I call the printer board out because this is what's connected uh, to the printer, uh, the printer assembly. And it has the control chips on it for the printer assembly. This is a uh, Synaptics, what they call their imaging smart uh, system on a chip printer controller and image processor. And then it also has 64 uh, megs of uh, DDR2 SD RAM on it as well. So this is the circuit board that actually prints those images out to the printer assembly, which nice. will take off in a little bit. Below that, if I can turn it like this, we're gonna remove this here now. If this is the uh, camera board below that, and that's what's responsible for taking the actual photos, right? You can also see on here the little memory card uh, slot right there. So this does have, I believe it has a little bit of internal storage, but obviously you wanna use a little micro SD uh, memory card there to provide more storage for photos. So I've got the screws removed, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to see if we can't lift uh, the camera control board out of here. I might have to, I might have to remove the printer module first to make okay. it a little easier. So with this out of the way, we can lift this up. I can also get to, oh, there we go. I can also get to uh, a few of more flat, flexible ribbon cables. Remember I was talking about those. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect those so we can remove the board. There's one. This one goes up 
uh, this one right here goes up to the uh, uh, the flat or the uh, the button, uh, and the um, the flash assembly up here, the button control assembly, and then ah, here's one something that's really interesting about this device. So if we uh, flip this over, this is uh, the cable for the LCD screen. I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to separate it just like that. Now, a little admission here. Yeah. I actually cracked this open for the, scene, the upcoming summer episode of the CNET magazine. And so we'd already cracked open one of these. And this is one of the things that's really interesting about cracking these open. So this cable, if the cameras can get a really tight, um, a, a close shot of it, this cable here goes, runs to the LCD screen. And it runs from the camera board to the LCD screen. On the other camera that I took apart for the CNET magazine, there was a separate contact that ran along the outside of this cable that was soldered to the board. Mm. And so we actually even have the solder gun sitting behind me that I was ready to use to take this apart because I kind of knew what was coming. This camera, same camera, Polaroid Snap Touch. Yeah. There's no solder connection on it. So they I changed it. I had no it. clue. So somewhere mid-production process, the manufacturing process actually changed. They got a different supplier. They got um, you know, a newer version of this LCD screen, which didn't need that solder point, yeah. which obviously is probably cheaper during the manufacturing process because it takes less time to do that kind of soldering. So yeah. um, anyway, that's really interesting to find that there's no solder point in this magazine. And that's one of the reasons we, we've been doing this all these years, because even within the same devices, sometimes you, find, you learn new things. All right. So... With that, go. Though, um, we have the camera control board. Pull off this little bit of sort of thermal, sticky. sort of, yeah, thermal sticky there. And there's a couple of things that are really kind of interesting. We have the camera. If I want, I can use one of my little plastic tools. And I should be able to, I don't know if I don't think it's, it's not soldered oh, down. There it is. So we can pull this right off. Pop it right off. And so you can see the camera right here, a little 13 megapixel uh, camera. Uh, this camera shoots. I think at um, uh, it'll shoot 1080. I think it'll shoot 1080p. Um, yeah, it'll shoot 1080 full HD uh, video to this. Obviously, can't do it and print the video, but it'll, and it's a 13 <laughs> megapixel camera. That would be very innovative. Yeah, if you could print a video. And here on the uh, attached to the uh, camera uh, control board here, we have a couple things that are kind of interesting to talk about. Um, right here, this is an eye catch. Uh, technology camera uh, sock or system on a chip. Um, there's another 128 meg uh, Micronix uh, NAND flash module that's up there. Um, this 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 internal storage lets you store up to 10 photos without using the micro SD. Okay. Like I said, uh, you need the micro SD card if you want to store any more than that. And so some of the smaller chips that are on here, they're really hard to see over on the back. If I flip this over here, there is a um, IS 1678S, uh, Bluetooth uh, dual mode sock on this. There is a speaker. So you have a speaker at the, at the bottom. You also have a microphone here that, that's pointed to the front to record uh, video. Um, and the um, micro SD card slot for the external memory card, micro uh, USB port yep. there. And then you have a contact for the reset button. So they pack a lot onto these little circuit boards. Because that's the, that's the brains of the camera, yep. really, right there. And yeah. as you're alluding to, um, with this camera, it's not just for printing photos. You can actually save photos and video um, with this device to watch later. So it is a, a functional uh, digital camera, basic digital camera uh, as well. And so we're now going to remove, I opened the back door so we can, it comes out a little easier. Uh, it was catching on this little metal contact here. And so we're going to remove the printer assembly. So here, um, all as one piece, we can actually see the little zero ink uh, printer assembly. As you were talking about, yeah. this is basically a very uh, printer assembly. It's essentially the same or extremely similar to the one that's in the other Bluetooth printer that just doesn't have the camera mounted to the top of it. Yes, and the Polaroid Zip, which is yep. also available for $100. It's just basically, like Bill said, it's a Bluetooth printer for your, uh, for your phone pictures or yep. tablet. All right, so here we have another one of the components that we have. This is the power button slash shutter release, uh, shutter release button contact. Yeah. That will set aside. And then the last thing to remove, if you really want to, uh, you can actually, if this is the LCD screen right here, mm -hmm. um, we can see the last cable here. If we want to remove it, 
it actually has just two little pins in the side here that I think they just pull out. They're not screws or okay. anything. They just pull out like that. One, you pull one of them out and you can separate the LCD here from the plastic body. There's a couple of springs that'll fall, that hold it, that help it pop up. Yep. And then the other pin is in the other side. They're just sort of pressure fit with a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, adhesive there to kind of hold them in place. Um, and there you go, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's, yeah. It was a really fun uh, teardown because it was really interesting to see how you can take a digital printer and how you can marry that to a camera put it all in together in one package and create a fun little device to use. It's cool, because you, if you think about it, you know, camera, printer, right there, the rest of this is sort of some brains to uh, help it function yep. and pull it together. You know, the, the touch screen to help select your pictures, do a little bit of editing. And as we talked about, there are fun personal uses, even some business uses yeah, cool. uh, with this device as well. So, another successful Cracking Open. All right, remember you can find Cracking Open photos for all of the devices we've uh, torn into on Tech Republic, and you can see all of our cracking open videos of all the devices that we've done on CNET and CNET's YouTube channel. So leave us a note in the comments if you have a device you'd like to see us cracking open. We're always looking for something new to take apart and learn about. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.